Welcome back. It's time for What's Hot, where we talk about the stories that have us all talking. Today we're joined by Rochelle Fritsch, a local blogger. Plus, Jeff Wagner is back. So many companies are taking advantage of the new rules under the health care overhaul. Some companies charging higher insurance premiums or deductibles to workers who don't complete company set health goals. Like smokers, overweight workers, should companies punish those who don't meet the company's health goals? Well, you, you know, I think when you approach it from the standpoint that people are being punished, puts a definite spin on it. Um, I think employers have the right. They're obviously interested in their own bottom line, and their bottom line ultimately ends up affecting employ employees. Um, if this is a way of ensuring their bottom line and making sure they can hang on to more people, make sure more people are employed, they're in their right. I'm not saying that it's not intrusive and it feels like an overstep, but I think this is the way, the direction in which we're heading. Well, it's definitely the direction we're heading. I mean, at this company, for years and years, if you are a smoker, you've paid more. Now, you can say, are you penalizing smokers or you're awarding non-smokers? What makes this interesting, though, is, is you can argue that at least smoking is a choice. This is now going to saying, okay, you know, we, we think you're, you're heavy or we think your cholesterol level is too high and if you don't lower it or you don't lose that weight, you know, then you're going to either be penalized or not rewarded. Th that gets a little tougher because, I mean, what about the people who just are, are big boned? You know, that, that's, mm -hmm. it's different than smoking in some respects. Well, this is, I mean, when it's focused on behavior, you can look at any type of insurance, life insurance, even car insurance to right. some aspect, uh, your behavior will influence your right. rates and if you with your medical care engage in risky behavior you're going to pay more. I guess to me the interesting thing though Steve is how far do you take this? Do you say okay we're going to look at your family history and if you have a family history of cancer you are more predisposed to have cancer so we're going to charge you more. Now I know that's not quite what this is but are we heading in that but direction? But also what's the barometer? I mean there's been a lot of um, you know with BMI a right. lot of people right. say it's inaccurate so are you using that body mass index to decide who's overweight or not that's going to bring a whole bunch of people who are not overweight into that pool that would right. have to pay more. So I think there are a lot of variables that are questionable. Right. But this is, I mean, Rochelle's right. This is the wave of the future. So fair or not, it, it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Don't drink, don't smoke. What do you do? Coming up next. <laughs> to Adam Ant. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> we'll reveal the viewer's choice topic and we'll get another check on her cold forecast. Choice topic of the day. Oof. We're joined by Rochelle Fritch and Jeff Wagner Bless from 620 you. WTMJ. In my head spin. Britain paying new mothers to breastfeed their babies. It's aimed at boosting the practice in poor areas. Moms are offered shopping vouchers. Is this a good idea? I, I think it is. I, I do, and, and I say that because what they're doing is simply, it's a pilot program. They aren't saying they're going to do it forever. They're not saying they're going to do it with everybody. But they've targeted economically disadvantaged areas where these moms are not breastfeeding their children, and they're doing it to have outcomes of healthier kids and even, even healthier adults. So my concern is, is that they collect this data, and if it is successful, how are they going to keep it going? Because ultimately what they're going to end up doing is changing the culture. When you change a culture, that's a long-haul thing. So how do they ensure that they can keep going until people just start breastfeeding on their own? I think it's a great idea. Well, um, <laughs> I do. this is one of those times where, you know, I really, especially since it's Britain, I don't have a problem one way or the other. Now, if we were talking about coming over to the United States and we were talking about a pilot program where we were taking taxpayer dollars to, to do this as opposed to simply encouraging it if people decide it might be a good idea, well, then I, I might want to wade in. But if those wacky Brits want to do this and want to spend the money, I say that's fine. Bob's your <laughs> uncle. <laughs> If it has a good outcome, though, um, it, I think it's a, it's a small investment over a short period of time for some really, really long-term good outcomes. So That's our viewer's choice topic of the day. <laughs> Lightning round time. You can now own a bulletproof suit for the low price of $20,000. Just something, you know, you can wear to the grocery store. I'm kidding. A company decided to make the suit after a client was shot on the job. Would you want a bulletproof suit? How much does it weigh? Don't know. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I have found companies out there, they make like bulletproof polo shirts. Mm -hmm. 
With a it's bullet remarkable through. what you can get when you feel your life is in danger. See, here's my concern about the whole thing. I mean, first of all, do you dry clean it? I know I would spill. This would be like one of those <laughs> deals where I show up, you know, I've got the Maybe expensive Maybe it's stain tie. proof too, well, Jeff. Well, I, yeah, I don't, it, you know, it's 22 <laughs> grand. 22 grand for this type of suit. I, I, I mean, I understand that people make enemies and stuff, but <laughs> my goodness, who has so many enemies that they need a $22,000 suit? That's my thought. Suit? Like, where, well, where yeah. are you doing business <laughs> that you need exactly. this suit? Well, I'm thinking if you need a bulletproof suit, you've got like bigger issues <laughs> where you need like the bodyguards and secret service mm -hmm. and an armored car. Just, so. Yeah, just go for the full body Honest armor. Forget be. the suit. Yeah. $22,000. That just th put, uh, put that in perspective. You know, I'm watching the story here. It appears to work. Well, I hope <laughs> so. They put enough Kevlar in between these layers of fabric, it looks like it's going to do the job. <laughs> Well, it actually stopped bullets. How about that? Look at that right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Twenty-two thousand bucks. Well, and actually, it's stylish as well. Yeah, you know? look I at mean, him. It's, He's, it's he, got he, he cuts tailing. a trim figure in that bullet in that bulletproof suit. Okay, I, I'm convinced. I mean, maybe can we get TMJ to put in like a clothing budget for you and me, Steve, so that you know well, we can wear those. Well, at least the reporter didn't wear the suit, and then you know they <laughs> shot him. Oh, that's coming. That's right. coming. To see if it really works. But what's hot discussion? <laughs> we'll continue online. You can find that at TMJ4.com/hot. Uh. Coming up, Storm Team Forecast.